At this point of our lecture series, we understand that each of the lymphocytes circulating in our body express unique antigen specific receptors. When these lymphocytes encounter their specific antigen, they get stimulated and undergo proliferation to produce a clone of that specific lymphocyte. And finally, they differentiate into effector cells and memory cells. We also studied that our immune system produces nearly infinite number of lymphocytes and each of these express unique antigen receptors on their cell membrane. Our immune system also generates lymphocytes capable of recognizing self antigens. Such lymphocytes are known as autoreactive or self reactive lymphocytes. So, it becomes crucial for our immune system to make sure that only those lymphocytes mature that have the potential to recognize non self antigens. This is because mature, auto reactive lymphocytes will start damaging the host's own tissues. In the previous lecture, we talked about self tolerance. We also understood the meaning of central and peripheral tolerance. Before beginning the topic, let's quickly recall some important concepts about T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes originate in the bone marrow, but later they migrate to the thymus for their further development. It is in the thymus that these T lymphocytes rearrange their T cell receptor genes. So, one of the main function of thymus is to produce T cell receptors. Developing T cells in the thymus are known as thymocytes. Each of these thymocytes have randomly generated antigenic specificity. We also know that T cells recognize only peptide antigens, and important point here is that they don't recognize them in isolation. T cells recognize peptide antigens as peptide MHC complex. Note that these MHCs are our body's own molecules, and therefore, we also call them self MHC molecules. T cells recognize and bind both the MHC molecule and the peptide antigen displayed on the target cell. Let's begin and understand mechanisms and processes of central T cell tolerance. When precursor T cells from bone marrow first enter the thymus, they lack most of the surface molecules that are characteristic of mature T cells. And their receptor genes are also not rearranged. Once inside the thymus, these precursor T cells start developing and they express T cell receptors of random antigenic specificity. During their maturation in the thymus, immature T cells undergo an elaborate screening process. This process involves three main selection events, namely, non-selection, positive selection and, negative selection. Recall that, all nucleated cells express MHC class 1 molecules. And under normal conditions these MHC1 molecules display self-antigens. So, thymic epithelial cells will also express MHC1 molecules. Also in the thymus, bone marrow derived dendritic cells and macrophages are found. These antigen presenting cells present peptide antigens in complex with MHC2 molecules. These peptide antigens are derived from all the proteins made by these cells. Besides this, they also display peptide antigens derived from soluble proteins taken up from extracellular fluid. So, what we understand here is that, in the thymus, the immature T cells will mostly interact with self antigens in complex with self MHC molecules. According to scientists, the fate of the developing T cells in the thymus is determined by the strength with which immature T cells interact with self peptide self MHC complexes. If, 
immature T cells fail to recognize and bind the self-antigen self-MHC molecules. They undergo programmed cell death or apoptosis. Most of these cells have non-functional T cell receptors. They may also lack receptors recognizing MHC molecules. So, lack of interaction between these T cells and self-peptide self-MHC molecule results in death of T cells. This selection event is known as non-selection. If immature T cells are successful in recognizing these peptide MHC molecules, a survival signal is conveyed to the nucleus of the immature T cell. And these T lymphocytes divide and grow further. This process is known as positive selection. Positive selection selects those immature T cells that bind moderately to the self peptide self MHC molecules. This interaction is not too strong, nor too weak. One of the main role of positive selection is to make sure that thymocytes are capable of recognizing self MHC molecules. T cells should learn to recognize peptide antigens in complex with MHC molecules. Those immature T cells that bind very strongly to self peptide self MHC molecules undergo cell death or apoptosis. Such T cells are potential auto reactive cells. This process of removal of selected T cells is known as negative selection. Dead cells are phagocytosed by macrophages in the thymus. So, we learned that in the central T cell tolerance, immature T cells selected by positive selection survive. And these are the cells with potential of recognizing non self antigens in complex with MHC molecules. These immature T cells leave the thymus and migrate to the secondary lymphoid organs. Process of negative selection removes all the potential auto reactive T cells that recognize self antigens. But, all self antigens are not expressed in the thymus. Some self antigens may appear in other tissues or, at different stages in the development of cells. Auto reactive T cells recognizing these self antigens escape central T cell tolerance. They migrate successfully to peripheral lymphoid tissues where, the mechanisms of peripheral tolerance prevent their maturation and eliminate them. We will study peripheral T cell tolerance in our next video lecture. Thank you.